At GMVN Tech, we are often asked, isn't a gravel bike just a cross-country bike with drop handlebars? And uh, my personal favorite, why is GMVN covering gravel anyway? Well, I'm going to go into depth about the two and the differences, covering geometry and even wheel circumferences. So stay tuned to find out for yourself. A gravel bike is basically off-road road riding and a cross-country bike is your classic mountain biking going up, down and through single track. But I can see where the confusion lies lately as the lines have started to blur. You can buy XC bikes with rigid forks and you can buy gravel bikes with fat tyres and front suspension. But there are some minute differences that make them better bikes for their purest category. So let's take a closer look. It should go without saying that a gravel bike is more designed to be sat in the saddle pedaling. And while an XC bike does need to be pedaled in the saddle as well, but it also needs to be really good at single track and tackling obstacles. So the geometry numbers need to reflect a more dynamic riding position. When we look at wheelbases between the two bikes, they can be quite dramatically different. A gravel bike has quite a short wheelbase. It needs this so that it can be nimble in big slalom corners and fast fire road descending corners. A longer wheelbase will also be good for the XC bike to keep the front end down when it's climbing up steep technical terrain. Gravel bikes tend to have much steeper head angles than XC bikes. The gravel bike needs a steeper head angle so that you can balance both wheels and you can also keep your weight over the front to control that front end and keep grip on that front wheel as you go around corners. The XC bike needs a slacker head angle as it brings you back into the center with its longer wheelbase. It also leaves you feeling behind the bike when you tackle obstacles like roots and rocks. The gravel bike, because of its steep head angle, may leave you feeling a little out of depth when you're going over rooty terrain or down steep terrain. But equally, the XC bike may feel a little sluggish if you were using that for gravel. An XC bike tends to have a much taller stack and a longer reach. And this puts the rider upright, so it's more confidence inspiring in technical terrain and more dynamic for when you're tackling single track. On a gravel bike, we tend to have a shorter reach, but a lower stack. Now this will feel like the same sort of stretch on the bike, but you'll be much lower. So this gives you a more aerodynamic position for riding fast and long distances on say fire roads. And it also means that you're weighting that front wheel again, as it's most important to keep grip on that front wheel. On a gravel bike, don't forget that handlebars and even hoods can add extra length to your bike. So it's not just about reach if you're looking at whether a bike fits you or not. Generally, if you don't know what you're looking for, then the manufacturer usually has a good idea of what size you need. On an XC bike, you'll usually find flat handlebars. This gives you a much stronger riding position for taking on obstacles. It also means that you can control and turn that front end if you're riding through single track and turning round trees. On the gravel bike, you tend to have drop bars as this gives you a nice aero position. You tend to be cornering whilst you're leaning rather than turning the bars. And you also get multiple positions on the hoods and on the drops, which is great for changing up your position if you're doing long miles in the saddle. XC bikes tend to have front suspension from 80 to 120 mil. This is 100 mil, that's about average for an XC bike. Gravel bikes tend to be either no sus at all, just a rigid fork, ranging up to about 60 millimeters. So the gravel bike quite rightly bridges the gap between road and cross country. Gravel suspension forks also differ in that they need to have shorter travel to keep you more upright. And also if you bike pack in, it means that you don't sink too much and steepen up all the angles on your bike. If like me, you're an adventurer, then rigid forks might be the way to go. They often come with bolt bosses, which means you can even attach your luggage or extra water to them. 
Both gravel and XC bikes tend to come with hydraulic disc brakes these days. Gravel will usually have 140 to 160 disc rotors, whereas XC are usually 160 to 180. Also, gravel tends to only have two pot or two piston calipers, although you can upgrade them to four pot if you are weighting the bike or if you're a heavier rider, if you want more stopping power. Also, I would say that 140 discs on a gravel bike is pretty good for most things. Some people will want to put 160 on the front and some people even put a 140 on the rear and keep it smaller because they feel that it doesn't lock up the back wheel. Personally, I don't have any problem with that, but it's personal preference. The brakes obviously look very different on both bikes. The XC bike has a lever on flat bars, whereas the gravel bike needs a lever that can be operated from both the hoods and on the drops. So it's very similar to road in that it's integrated into the gear shifting mechanism. Most modern XC bikes come with a 1x12 gearing system. Now this Shimano XT that Rich has got here has a cassette of 10 to 51, which is one of the widest ranges going from smallest, hardest gear up to a nice big, easy gear, around about 510%. Now the Shimano GRX on the gravel bike here is the top range for Shimano gravel at the moment and it's a two by 11 system. So two gears on the front, 11 gears at the rear. And that is obviously 22 gears in total, but there's a lot of crossover. So you don't actually get as much range as with the cross country bike. You get about 474% on this. Now I do expect a two by 12 to come about soon. There is a SRAM Force Axis available at the moment, which is a 2x12, and that has slightly more range than the 1x12 Shimano that we have here. But obviously that is electronic, so it means it would be much more expensive, almost twice the price. And if you're considering long distance riding and bike packing, then you're going to need to consider charging up those batteries as well. But there are some benefits to a 2x11 system if the range is suitable for you. Not only is it mechanical, but you get to dump a whole bunch of gears with just one click on the left-hand side. That means if you're going fast on fire roads and then you're met by a steep climb, you can dump a whole load of gears all at once. This is much more likely to happen on gravel riding than it is on cross-country. Cross-country riders tend to favor a one by 12 system as well, as you get a good range, but you don't get any crossover and you can move through the gears quickly. And that's what's important on a cross-country race bike. You can get a one by system for gravel, which is nice and simple and you don't get the crossover, but bear in mind that if it's a one by 11 system, you're not gonna get the range that you do with a two or a one by 12. So that means if you're in the sprinty end of gravel, it might be fine. Or if you're in the cruisy, climby end of gravel, that might be fine. But if you expect to be doing all of those, then you might not get the range of gears that you want. Your average road bike weighs about 11 kilos and a gravel bike, roughly around 13 kilos, as it needs to be a bit heavier to take on heavier duty terrain. And then going up to the cross country, your average bike is around 15 kilos. Granted, you can get a top spec race bike in 13 kilograms, but it will be very, very top with a high price tag. So this puts the gravel bike, even in weight, smack bang in the middle between road and XC. So if you're looking to cover distance, with a lightweight bike that's simple and reasonably affordable, then the gravel bike is probably your best bet. In both gravel and XC, you'll see a lot of carbon and aluminium frames. So carbon will be typically lighter and stiffer, so it's a great choice for the racers if money's no object. Aluminium, slightly heavier, but a lot more affordable. On the gravel scene, we see a lot more steel bikes than we do in XC. 
and still can be a little too heavy for XC, but on the gravel scene, it's seen as a frame that can take a bit more of a beating and it can be fixed and re-welded if it needs to. So the steel gravel bike is a bit of a favorite amongst bike packers and long distance riders. Titanium has similar benefits to steel in that it can take a bit of a beating and it can be fixed, but it can come in a raw finish, which means it's popular amongst bike packers as you won't wear off your paint. And it's also a lot lighter than steel, but it does come with a heftier price tag to match. Most XC bikes come with 29 inch wheels these days, although you can still get them as 27.5, especially for smaller sizes. On the gravel bike, you tend to find a 700C wheel size, which is actually just a 29 inch wheel diameter, so similar to the bigger wheels on the XC. It also comes in 650B, like my bike here, which is spec to be for smaller riders, but also a lot of people are favoring the smaller wheels so they can put fatter tires on there if they want more cushion and more comfort. The big difference between say road wheels and gravel wheels is that gravel wheels tend to be a lot wider. And over to the XC bike, they are even wider still. For a gravel bike, you can get anything from a 38C up to a 50C, and that's about 38 millimeters up to 58 millimeters. And just to confuse things, we go over to inches on mountain bikes, where it's usually 1.5 inches up to 2.5 inches. So just for reference for all you mountain bikers out there, a 700C wheel with a 38C tire is roughly the same as a 29er wheel with a 1.5 inch tire because 38C is roughly 38 millimeters, which is nearly 1.5 inches. At the fatter end of gravel, you can see my bike's got 650B wheels with 44C tires, and that's at the fatter end of gravel, but that only gives you a similar diameter to a 29er XC bike with one inch tires. And that's pretty much on the skinny end of XC. So XC does go into the wider category so that it can roll over technical terrain and go through rough, rooty single track. Whereas gravel is designed to be a little firmer. It doesn't need to go through technical terrain. It needs to be fast and nippy and agile. So even at the fatter end of gravel, it still might feel a bit out of its depth over rough, rooty terrain. Whereas the XC bike will shine in that kind of terrain, but it might actually feel a bit sluggish and slow if you were doing long distance gravel fire roads, say. So in conclusion, there's nothing wrong with using the XC bike to ride gravel or do a bit of bike packing. And equally, there's nothing wrong with taking a gravel bike down rooty single track, but each bike will feel more at home in its natural habitat. So be honest with yourself about the style of riding that you're going to have and the terrain that you're going to tackle so that you can pick the best bike for you. And hopefully this video has helped you along the way. But let us know in the comments below if you wanna hear more about bike packing and gravel and give us a thumbs up if you've liked what you've seen.